Happy Perks is an education and rewards platform for the un and underbanked. We use a combination of education, sweepstakes based incentives, delivered through a web and mobile delivery model in order to drive behaviors that are both positive for the low and middle income segment and profitable for financial services institutions. Why does there need to be behavior change among the low middle income segment? Well, living in a cash-based economy is a costly reality for a large portion of the people in this world. Um, we're based in New York and we look at the US market size about a quarter of Americans or are un or underbanked. About half of the world is un or underbanked. And in the US, the majority of these people get paid either by their employer or by the government. Um, and they get paid with a paper check and then they pay about three and a half percent to cash that check and then additional funds on top of that to pay their bills. So the average American can save about a week's worth of salary over the course of a year by switching to some form of electronic pay. Uh, today, most of those payments are done through prepaid debit cards. So when Jake and I started the company in 2009, we recognized a big problem in the prepaid debit card space in the US. And that is that these cards provide an elegant solution to the un and underbanked. And yet penetration was extremely low, uh, just about 10% of the total market size. And the usage on these cards was not beneficial to anybody in the value chain. Um, even the people who got these cards were going right to the ATM and taking out all of their money in the ATM, which negated the cost benefits of not using their cards to pay their bills, et cetera, um, negated the convenience and safety elements of having your card in an electronic account, and also negated the financial benefits for the financial services organizations who can make money through interchange on those cards. So we knew that there was a large problem here, and we probably had a business if we could figure out a way to solve this adoption and usage problem. So with that in mind, we started doing a lot of research and we came up with three insights that helped, in, helped us envision the solution to this problem. So the first insight that we had was that education is the primary barrier to both adoption, the adoption and usage problem. So the reason that people don't take prepaid cards is because they don't understand what they are or why they're beneficial for them. And the reason that they don't use those cards is because they don't understand how. They don't understand that you can use them at point of sale. They don't under understand the difference between signature and pin transaction. What do you do when a merchant is trying to steer you towards a pin? So that was the first insight that we had. The second was that the low middle income segment, particularly in the US, but this is consistent through all, throughout everywhere in the world at every moment in time, uh, are very motivated by chance-based games, more so than by incremental rewards. So in the US, the average American spends $200 a year on the lottery. And in many states on the Eastern Seaboard where, where we live, it's closer to six or $700. Now, that's, there's not perfect data on this, but we know that the low middle income over indexes on lottery spend. And that's for a lot of psychological and other, other reasons, which we can talk about later. But the insight was that people in this demographic are much more motivated by chance-based games than by guaranteed incremental reward schemes. And the third insight that we had that may not seem counterintuitive today, but in 2009, it was challenging to communicate this, is that this demographic is online. They over-index on smartphone usage. Um, and in 2007, you know, half of the un and underbanked had a computer access daily. Um, with at least three quarters of them using computers at least once a week. That was in 2007. Um, and again, we don't have perfect data, but we know that mobile phone penetration is dramatically increased since then, as well as computer usage, both on individual home computers and shared workplace computers. So with those three insights in mind, uh, a rewards model emerged for us. And you can think of it, uh, the easiest way to think of it is a rewards program on a prepaid debit card. So think of a rewards program that you might have on a piece of plastic, a credit card. You're rewarded for dollar volume, and you're rewarded with something incremental to your spend. So you spend $100, you get a point, an airline mile, a toaster, whatever. Um, that model we don't think should, can or should apply to the financially underserved for a few reasons. One is we don't want to incent poor people to spend more. It's a perverse incentive. Two is if you, even if you incented them to spend all of their money on their prepaid card, they would never spend enough to actually accumulate the reward. And so that doesn't serve to actually change the behavior, which is the primary objective of a rewards program. 
So Payperx is different in two main ways. One is what we award points for, and the other is what those points are worth. So rather than incent dollar volume, we incent first and foremost education, and I'll walk you through how we do that in a moment. Um, we also incent what we call savings life behaviors, um, and those could be on a prepaid debit card, things like using your card at point of sale because you're not paying the ATM charge. That could be things like linking your card to direct deposit because you're not having to pay the check cashing fee. Um, we customize this at a program level, and I'll talk more about that later. But again, we award for education and savings life behaviors. And the other big difference is what those points are worth. So rather than those points be worth something incremental to your spend, which is not motivating, not exciting to this demographic, each point that you earn on Payperks is worth the chance to win a cash prize. So it's a sweepstakes model. Every month we give away dozens, if not hundreds of cash prizes, ranging from $25 to a few thousand dollars. And every point you've earned through the education and the, and the savings behaviors are worth the chance to win one of those prizes. So the user experience is, is as follows. Um, this is what we call the Payperks scratcher. I believe some of them are floating around the room. They look just like a scratch and win ticket that people in this demographic are very familiar with and play, spend a lot of money on actually buying. We're not just a technology business, we're a technology enabled business. And so we do have these printed things that exist in the world. Um, and the way we deliver these is th in people's in envelopes. Uh, envelopes that go to people with their paychecks and envelopes that go to people with their government paychecks, uh, government benefits checks, whether that come from the federal government or state government. Um, we also deliver these through uh, email, through uh, eventually through SMS, um, and with cards, when, when prepaid cards are fulfilled. So the consumer would get one of these cards in the mail, they would be very excited by it because look at this amazing design, um, and they would scratch off this little silver area where they would see an activation code and the number of chances that they've already accumulated when they register that online. So they're directed to Payperks' website, which they can access on any computer or any mobile phone. They're instructed to create their user account in a very simple, straightforward process. Um, and then they're taken to the Payperks dashboard. So again, it's a gamified user experience where we're trying to leverage the excitement of these sweepstakes to drive engagement with the card program and also with the education that we create. So here you see the Payperks dashboard. The first thing you see is you have 110 points. That's in the top left corner. You can see that uh, you can win up to $1,000 and the next sweepstakes is in 10 days. And then the first thing the user is instructed to do is to see in the and that what's next feed, learn how to use your card at point of sale. So this is our educational curriculum. Um, it's designed with the low middle income consumer in mind who prefers pictures to text. So it's a big picture, one line of text. And it's a modular curriculum so that we can customize it for whoever we're offering this rewards program for. So the consumer sees one big picture, one line of text. They would click <coughs> through the slideshow, next, next, next. At the end, oh, we missed a slide here. But at the end of the module, they're given two questions. And for each question they answer correctly, they're given 10 points or 10 chances to win. Um, so that's the, the education. Uh, there's also, as I mentioned, say you're awarded for savings like behaviors. And again, we customize that at the program manager level such that we are rewarding the behaviors that are both positive for the consumer and profitable for the financial services organization. So in this, in this case, um, it's a payroll card program. So we're rewarding people for linking their card to direct deposit and rewarding them for each time pay is loaded onto their card. Um, to your point about having it to be shared, you know, games have to be a shared experience. We also have a referral program, so when you refer your friends, you can get points for that. Sam, my friend Sam signed up, so I got points for that. Um, paying at the pump, so we can incent specific categories of spend. Um, uh, point of sale transactions, so we don't, again, we don't incent dollar volume, but we incent the number of POS transactions as a proxy for behavior change. And again, how to use your card at point of sale, that's the educational module we just took. And every month we run cash sweepstakes and you know every point you've earned is converted into the chance to win one of them. When you win the prize, the money is loaded directly onto your prepaid card. So we've talked a lot, we've bashed a lot of big financial institutions today, so I'm gonna hopefully give a silver lining to how large established financial institutions can work with smaller startups to drive innovation. Um, so with something like the, the 
screenshots that I just showed you. Um, we went to MasterCard a few years ago, two years ago, and we said, this has to work. It's got to work. And they said, well, okay, let's try it. Let's do it in a system. Let's try this in a systematic way. So we partnered with MasterCard on a pilot of papers. Um, and for the sake of time, I won't go through exactly how we set up the pilot or how we measured the results. But let's just say it was extremely successful <laughs> in driving behavior change. Um, we were able to increase the number of people who took requested payroll cards. We were able to dramatically change how people were using the, the money on their cards once they had those cards. Uh, the average time on site was 12 minutes, so people were extremely engaged with our educational content. Um, and people were pleased with the customer experience. They didn't just find it educational, they found it engaging and fun as well. Um, so perhaps the best evidence of how successful the pilot was, was that MasterCard, who had a front row seat to this pilot, saw not just the application in the realm we were working on, which is payroll cards, but they saw a larger application of pay perks. And so we now have a much larger strategic partnership with MasterCard, where they um, promote pay perks to all of their issuers in the public sector and all their, by de facto, all of their consumers who are getting public sector benefits cards. So that is uh, Social Security Benefits uh, Disbursement in the US, which is the largest card program in the US. Um, we'll be rolling out on that program in the fall, um, as well as child support, unemployment insurance, and tax rebate programs, which are issued through state governments, and we'll be starting to roll out on those in the fall as well. So again, Payperks is promoted. There, you can think of Payperks as a feature of those card programs that's promoted to those users through mainly scratchers like this that are just put in either current check envelopes where people are still getting checks or card envelopes where people are getting cards in the mail. So that's what we're doing in the public sector. We're also doing just, uh, working with a number of issuers in the private sector, uh, payroll card issuers as well as GPR card issuers. A similar type of model, Payperks is a feature on their, pro on their card program helps makes the card more profitable for them. Uh, in turn, they promote pay perks to their card user base. Um, and we have a direct relationship with the consumer where we can educate them about prepaid cards and also other things moving forward. So we're starting on prepaid cards because it's a very, dare I say, clever way to gain access to millions and millions of users so we can educate them about prepaid cards and that provides a win-win in the prepaid card value chain. Once we have those consumers uh, engaged on our platform, we intend to educate them on other things. So logical extensions beyond prepaid cards would be other financial products and services that can be linked to prepaid cards or even not. So remittances, uh, debit, secured credit cards, um, and other asset building tools like credit, alternative credit data and things of the like. Um, and then beyond that, we can help drive other behavior, positive and profitable behavior, um, in other segments like health and fitness, career advancement, higher education, et cetera. So um, we're an Anthemis portfolio company. We're a New York-based startup. And we have been around for about three years. Um, we've had some nice successes. Uh, most recently, which my mom called to tell me, MasterCard uh, announced their partnership with Paper to the White House as a surprise to us. So we were on the White House blog, which was pretty cool. Um, we were named among the new wave of unbanked innovators at the underbanked forum a few weeks ago, um, named the next big thing in prepaid at this year's prepaid expo, recognized as the company to watch and pay before. Um, and as you may be able to tell from the bags under, under our eyes, we're quite busy right now uh, growing our team in New York. So if you know of any engineers looking, Python engineers in New York, we would be happy to uh, take their business cards from you and harass them afterwards. Um, and also partner development, both with financial services organizations uh, and also social impact organizations who we partner with to grow our content base. So with that, um, the way Jake and I divide and conquer is I do this and then he answers all the hard questions. So <laughs> do you have any questions? <coughs>